With Ronald Koeman's job at Barcelona currently looking as insecure as it's ever been, speculation has grown in recent weeks as to who could replace him at the camp now should he get the chop. On today's Scout Report, we're going to take a look at three of the most talked about candidates and assess whether they'd be a good fit. Let's go. Roberto Martinez the name most strongly linked with the Barcelona job of late is Roberto Martinez, who, having coached the Belgium national team for over five years now, may feel he's ready to re-enter club management. And while taking on a position at a club in Barca's predicament right now would certainly be a jump in the deep end for the former Everton boss, he's understood to be top of club president Joan Laporta's list. According to a recent report by Goal, the Barca hierarchy have already made contact with Martinez, and although official negotiations are yet to begin, the coach has apparently informed the Belgium FA that he intends to take the job if it is offered to him. This would require Barca paying 1.5 million euros in compensation, something they are reportedly happy to do, while the appointment would have to take place following the Nations League finals in October. But is he the right fit for Barcelona? Following the tenures of Ernesto Valverde and Kike Setien and the last 12 months in which Kerman has tried a number of tactics and shapes to get the best out of his squad, it's not as easy as it once was to say exactly how the Blaugrana should play. But he has always been committed to attacking football and despite spending most of his playing and managerial career in the UK, Martinez is Catalan, which will have done him no harm in the eyes of Laporta. He famously set the possession-based blueprint which was later followed by Brendan Rodgers and Michael Laudrup at Swansea, while his Belgium side have been among the most entertaining to watch at the two international tournaments in which he's led them. His Wigan sides were less dynamic, which was at least partly due to the limited talent at his disposal, and following his superb first season with Everton, his time at Goodison Park was a bit disappointing. Nevertheless, that first campaign on Merseyside is a good example of how his teams can look when things go right. Lining up almost exclusively in a 4-2-3-1 with a young Romelu Lukaku leading a direct and pacey forward line, Martinez's toffees like to shoot a lot. Ross Barkley, Gerard De La Fel, Kevin Morales and Lukaku all averaged over three shots per 90, and the team as a whole ranked sixth in the league for shots and shots in the box. For context, only Man City and Liverpool created more goal-scoring opportunities than that in 2020-21. They also accrued 72 points, comfortably their best showing of the Premier League era. But his side's success that term was also thanks in part to the solid defensive structure left over from David Moyes, conceding fewer goals than any side bar Chelsea and Man City. And as this faded in the following two years, Martinez's team suffered, finishing 11th in back-to-back -back campaigns and failing to breach the 50-point mark on both occasions. But despite his reputation for being a defensively naive coach, Martinez did at least make moves to combat the deficiencies of Belgium's so-called golden generation. Noticeably light on quality at fullback, he shifted them to a 3-4-2-1 system, one which Kerman had some success with at Barca last term. This served him particularly well at the 2018 World Cup, in which his side were the top scorers on 16 and conceded just 7, the same as winners France. Utilising Thomas Mounier and Yannick Carrasco as wingbacks, with Mounier's defensive inconsistencies marked by an excellent back three, and Carrasco's experience as part of a watertight Atletico Madrid side making him an ideal candidate to hold down the left flank, Martinez got it spot on. Only switching systems for their impressive win over favourites Brazil, in which Lukaku was shifted to the right of attack in a 4-3-3, he was one of the most tactically impressive coaches at the finals, and had he overcome a once-in-a-generation France side in a semi-final split by the finest of margins, he may well have taken football's ultimate prize. Having won 78% of his matches in charge of the Red Devils with just five losses in 64 games, it's fair to say that Martinez has learned how to maintain a winning side. The fact they have held the number one spot in the FIFA World Rankings since 2019, the longest such run since Spain in the early 2010s, is further evidence of this. Defence would still be a worry for him at Barca though, his ageing back line looked a lot more vulnerable at Euro 2020, and defensive frailties were also a sticking point for the Blaugrana last term. If Laporta wants someone who can rebuild a side from back to front, then Martinez may not be the best choice. Xavi while he may be a bona fide Barcelona legend, appointing Xavi as manager would not be without its risks. Once the favourite to succeed Kerman, during the run-up to the club's last presidential election, it was known that the former midfielder was in line to take the job if Victor Font beat Joan Laporta, with the candidate even joking that he'd cover every Barca season ticket for a year if he was unable to deliver him. 
Font was of course unsuccessful, but having overseen the club's golden era of the late 2000s and early 2010s, Laporta maintains a close relationship with Xavi, and it seems only a matter of time before the Al Sadd manager returns to Catalonia. However, with the Qatar World Cup just over a year away, the 41-year-old, who is a major ambassador for the tournament, may be minded to stay in the country until then at least. And despite Catalan publication Sport claiming that many Barca board members favour him as Kerman's successor, Laporta is less convinced. Earlier this year, he said that Xavi needed more experience before taking on the club in its current situation, implying the need for an older coach to lay the foundations for success before he takes over. Nevertheless, it's not out of the realms of possibility for Laporta to be swayed. After all, he took a chance on a 37-year-old Pep Guardiola in 2008, when he had just a year's worth of managerial experience with Barca B in the Spanish fourth tier. And when you consider his playing career, it's no surprise that Xavi would offer a return to the ideals of Guardiola if he were appointed. Perhaps the most ready-made player for Pep's tactical vision when he took the reins from Frank Rijkaard all those years ago, the former Barca captain implemented the possession-based positional play that the Blaugrana became famous for after taking the Al Sadd job in 2019. His side retained 64% of the ball in games, a figure well above the Qatar Stars League average and not far off the kind of dominance enjoyed by Barca in their 2010-11 pomp. He also lines them up in a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 depending on the opposition, favouring the latter if they are facing a front three, while he also experimented with a 3-4-3 shape when he was first appointed. As you'd expect, Xavi's side attack and defend as an entire unit, with quick recovery after losing possession, a high press and fast progression through the lines all hallmarks of their play. Their 79 progressive passes per 90 is unsurprisingly the highest in the league. For context, Barca averaged 47 progressive passes a match last term, albeit in a much tougher competition. And the fact Xavi has been able to employ the likes of Gabi and Santi Cazorla, two of Spanish football's great midfield technicians, has certainly helped his cause too. But that's not to take away from his achievements. Last term, they went unbeaten in the league, the first time they had done so since 1996, dropping just six points all season. And with managers like Laurent Blanc and Luis Castro, and players like James Rodriguez and Toby Alderweireld now among his opposition, it will be interesting to see if he can replicate that success this term. Even if Laporta wants him to spend some time working closer to home before making him the main man, Xavi has already laid out the blueprint of his Barcelona vision. Eric Ten Hag but when it comes to the modern identity of Barcelona that was established by Johan Cruyff in the 1980s, then another Dutchman in Eric Ten Hag is an outstanding candidate. Like Cruyff before taking the Barca job, the former centre-back is currently in charge of Ajax, with his 73% win rate coincidentally identical to what his legendary predecessors sustained in the Amsterdam dugout. And while the Eredivisie is generally seen as a relatively weak division compared to the best in Europe, that win percentage is still comfortably the best achieved by any Ajax manager this century. Ten Hag has clearly found a good formula for consistent domination. He has pedigree beyond Ajax too, leading Utrecht to their highest Eredivisie finish in 15 years in 2016 while acting as head coach and sporting director, and managing Bayern Munich's reserve side while Pep Guardiola was at the Allianz Arena. It's no surprise then that he counts Pep as one of his biggest influences. His 2018-19 Ajax side are the most famous. They scored 119 goals in 34 Eredivisie games, their biggest output since 1986, and made the Champions League semi-finals for the first time since 1997. And without doubt, his biggest success story at the Johan Cruyff Arena is current Barcelona midfielder Frankie de Jong. Moving him from midfield to centre-back when he took over at the end of 2017, Ten Hag was confident in the youngster's ability to dictate play from the back, and de Jong soon earned comparisons to German legend Franz Beckenbauer for his excellent defensive awareness, technical ability and passing range. That season, he married 3.6 tackles and interceptions per 90 with 3.1 dribbles, beating his man with 94% of his attempted take-ons, and even created 1.8 chances a game despite playing so many minutes in the back line. It's no surprise then that Ten Hag was critical of de Jong being deployed in an advanced midfield role in his first season at Barca, and it also goes some way to explaining why Kerman got some of his best performances from the Dutch international when he played him in a back three last term. Clearly, Ten Hag knows a total footballer when he sees one, and his ability to get the best out of such players has seen him associated with the much-fabled Barca DNA. 
And at a club which is currently in a financial crisis due to continued overspending on superstars, a manager with a track record of creating them would surely be an ideal appointment, especially given the potential of youngsters like Ronald Araujo, Ricky Pooch, Gavi and of course Ansu Fati and Pedri. Reportedly Bayern Munich's backup option to Julian Nagelsmann before the German's appointment, Ten Hag is ready to manage a European giant. If EFD ran Barcelona, he would be top of our list. So that was our assessment of three managers who could replace Ronald Koeman at Barcelona. But what did you make of it? Do you have any other shouts yourself? Let us know in the comments below and the best one will get read out on Sunday Vibes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to EFD if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.